Hi, my name is Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the Break the Cycle website that you may be looking at, or I hope you do. This little video is part of Lesson 1 out of 8 lessons that comprise that nonprofit educational website. Lesson 1 has to do with discovering who runs your life, your true self or your false self. Lesson 1 is predicated on the idea that all normal, underline normal, not pathological, personalities are composed of what might be called subcells. Each subself is a specialist and provides a unique um, pattern of assets to your personality an emotion, a way of thinking, images, various things like that. When people first encounter this idea, like, oh, I have a bunch of subcells, a common reaction, check this against your own, is, hey, wait a minute, does that mean I'm crazy? Absolutely not. Does it mean I'm a multiple personality? In a sense, yes, except in a way smaller way than classic people like Sybil who have true multiple personality disorder. The reality seems to be all of us have minor subcells and personality sub parts, frag fragmented personalities. Now, the point of this video is to address a normal reaction that you or many people have to this strange concept of subcells, which is skepticism. Oh yeah, sure. I have plenty of subcells running my life. Is that what you're trying to tell me? You have a, I have a false self and a true self. What kind of psychobabble is that? Baloney. I have one personality. I am me. That's all. End of story. Well, cynicism and skepticism is a normal. Guess what? Protective reaction from your guardian subcells. A standard helpful subself that many people have can be called your skeptic or your cynic. Perhaps he or she is the one that caused your reaction to this idea that you're really made up of many talented subselves. I want to offer you an exercise that may give you more perspective on whether you actually have subselves or not. I want to show you a very safe way to meet one of your subselves that you choose. Your choice. Are you open to doing that? If not, uh, close this video. If you're willing to try an interesting, safe experience, let's go further. This starts with the idea that you have many traits. Every person, you, me, all the people you know, have various traits that make them up. I invite you to stop and reflect, what are some traits that people who know you well would describe you as having? Well, she is usually friendly, helpful, thoughtful, has a great sense of humor, uh, sometimes it's pretty rigid, occasionally she tends to deny things, blah blah blah. Imagine a list of traits that people would use to describe you, or pick your own. Now, imagine that each one of those traits, whatever they might be, they're not good or bad, they're just part of who you are. Each trait is brought to you by a subself or a specialist. Let's say, for example, that you like to please other people. You may be one of millions of people who depend for self-esteem on, I have to be nice, I can't confront people, I don't want to be argumentative, I don't want to be a hothead or rigid. I want to be friendly and I want to please people. A very powerful guardian subself, if overactive, can take you over, distort your personality, can be called the people pleaser. Anyway, I invite you to think of some positive traits that you're proud of or pleased of, pleased with, that describe you. I'm analytic, I'm patient. I'm thoughtful, I'm spiritual, I'm friendly. Think about traits like that. Pick one. And let's interview that subself, just to give you the actual experience of talking to one of your dynamic, talented subselves. 
Here's how to do that. Pick a trait, have an open mind as in being a true student. Trust me for the moment that this is a safe experience. Nothing bad can happen whatsoever. I've done this with hundreds of people. No one has ever had a problem with it. Never. Get yourself physically comfortable in a place that where you will not be distracted for the next, say, 10 minutes. Okay, no phone calls, no kids, no pet gerbils, um, no doorbells. Try and get into a safe, quiet, comfortable place and relax. Sit in a chair, lie down, whatever suits you. If you have glasses on, take them off. Start by just breathing comfortably. You can keep your eyes open or close them, whatever suits you. As you relax, allow yourself to picture, in whatever way you can, a place that is absolutely safe and comfortable. It can be a real place that you're aware of. It might be a cabin in the woods, a beautiful spot on a mountaintop. Imagine a place where you have been or you might want to go, which is safe, quiet, and undistracted. This is your special place. The temperature is comfortable. The sounds in the background are pleasant, perhaps natural, like water softly running. While you're there, imagine being there and looking at this place the one in you who is doing the seeing, quote unquote, who is seeing this place, is your true self. She or he cannot see herself. She does the seeing. She's the one that images. Now, take the trait of yours that you picked a few moments ago. I'm friendly. I'm patient. I'm a good entertainer. Uh, I'm inquisitive. I'm trustworthy. Take the trait that you would like to find out more about, focus on it, try out the idea that this trait is brought to you by one of your talented subselves. In this imaginary, quiet, safe place, your sacred place, in your mind, think out loud, I'd like the part that brings this trait to me to show itself to me now. Be open to anything that happens. There's no right way to do this. Trust the first thought that comes to you, or an image, or a feeling, or a memory, anything. If you can get an image, it does not have to make sense. It can be of a color, abstract, real, anything. Let's say you get an image of a human face, or part of a body, or even a whole body could be young, could be old, anything is okay. Let's imagine that this face or person or body that comes into your mind is a subself. Look at this subself and see if you, meaning your true self, see if you can see this entity's face, if it has a face. Uh, in a moment, we'll cover what happens if you don't see a person-like image. If it has a face, see in your mind, ask this entity with a face to look at you, meaning look at your true self. If this one is willing to do that, ask in your own way, would you be willing to talk to me for a few minutes? Be open to any response at all could be, why do you want to do that? Who are you? Why? Sure. No way. Any response is legitimate. If you get a uh, okay or maybe or all right, if, if someone, if, if the one asks you, well, why do you want to do that? Say, I want to meet you. I want to know about you. You're important to me. Something like that. So let's say that you get the green light from this entity. It might be an image of a cat, or your favorite parakeet, or your grandmother, 
or some subject that's familiar to you, um, look at that entity, make contact and say, um, if you're willing to talk to me, I'd like to ask you just a few questions. That's all. I don't want to change you. That's, I just want to learn about you. What would you like to be called? Open your mind, trust the very first thing that comes into your mind, no matter how silly. I want to be called Pretzel. So be it. You say, Pretzel, thank you. Um, would you tell me how old you are? You may or may not get an explicit answer. Well, I don't know. Or, I'm six. Whatever. Accept whatever comes into your mind. Um, ask, Pretzel, can you tell me what year it is? Be open your mind for any response. Uh, do not expect this entity to say, it is the current year. Could be anything. Could be, I don't know, could be 776. BC could be anything. Ask this sub-self um, without judgment. Don't react, just ask questions. And can you tell me, Pretzel, where do you live? Well, I live here. Well, where is here? Well, I live in the forest. Oh, okay. Um, does the forest have a name? No. Are there any other ones in the forest with you? Well, yeah. How do you like those subcells? How do you like those ones in the forest? Nah, I don't pay much attention to them. You see what I'm doing? This is Pete now. This is not yourself. I'm inviting you to form a conversational dialogue as you would with another human being. There's no major structure to this. The theme is ask questions that will help you get to know this Sub-self. That's the whole point. This may take one minute. You might get into a real dialogue that could last ten minutes. Your choice. Be prepared for anything. Try not to criticize. Try not to analyze. Oh, that's crazy, or that's nuts, or gee, that's interesting. Don't do that. Just receive. Act like a radio receiving a signal. You're here to interview this amazing, unique part of your personality. When you feel done, it's up to you, thank this one. Pretzel, I'm really grateful. Thanks for talking to me. Sure. No big deal. You may choose to say, would you mind talking to me again? If that would be interesting or useful. In any event, <laughs> Thank this sub-self, appreciate it, and say, we're done, something that denotes you're finished. Take a good, solid breath from your belly, open your eyes in case they were closed, look around, reorient yourself, breathe well a couple of times, flex your fingers, your toes, move your shoulders and your head a little bit, get back into your body. And then, Contemplate the experience you just had. What I'm proposing is, if you tried this and if you got some kind of response that made sense to you, even if it didn't, you just did a little bit of, quote, parts work. You interviewed or had a dialogue with one of your parts. In my experience as a parts therapist, an inner family system therapist, most normal average people have somewhere between 18 and 35 subcells, like the one you just met. What would happen if you got curious and started to interview each one of these parts? What do you think you might learn? Some subcells don't live in the present, they live in the past. Some subcells don't know who you are or where you live or who you live with. Some subcells don't know your true self. Some are afraid of your true self. Some follow your true self. There's all kinds of variations. This exercise, or an inner family dialogue, is tremendously useful in answering the question, who am I? You are a group of talented, unique subsets.